Hi gamers, and welcome to the start of a long overdue third round of console specific collection updates. Uh, when I first started my channel uh, over uh, 10 years ago, uh, one of the first things I did was show off my individual collections for each and every console that I had. So I did one video for the NES and one video for the Super Nintendo and one video for video for GameCube and so on. And uh, uh, I revisited these col collections uh, about four years after that, and uh, uh, because I had uh, had had so many more games uh, added to those collections, so they were quite out of date those uh, initial videos. But uh, it's been now like. Uh, five or even six years since uh, some of the uh, collection updates, so I, don't, uh, I thought it's gonna be it's gonna be high time for me to revisit some of these. I've been had uh, I've been having so many uh, comments and uh, requests for me to do updates on this. So here we go. So first up, we're gonna be starting with the NES. Uh, I'm not gonna be going through all of my. Uh, console uh, specific collections namely because uh, I haven't had that much uh, uh, that much of an uh, update that much uh, of an uh, you know that many additions to uh, each and every uh, console throughout these years but uh, Nintendo's consoles of course I'm always collecting for so we're gonna be seeing updates at least for the NES Super Nintendo GameCube Wii uh, the 3DS but also uh, consoles like uh, Dreamcast and AES that I also love. So those are down the line. First up, let's start here with the NES. So this is the state of my collection uh, at the moment in 2019. I got a total of 77 games here, which I know is not the biggest NES uh, collection by any uh, stretch. I'm missing some classics here like Rob the Robot, and uh, some other other games uh, which I'm going to be pointing out. Uh, all of those games are, of course, on my shopping list. But uh, you can also uh, point out uh, in the comments below if I'm missing some uh, absolute classic that you think that should be a part of my collection. So starting here in alphabetical order, I'm not going to be talking about all of the games here, just a choice few. So this uh, doesn't drag on for an eternity. First up, we have the Adventures of Rad Gravity, one of the uh, uh, off-beat uh, uh, platforming games for the NES. A uh, nice uh, adventure aspect added on. Then we have Athletic World. This is uh, one of the games that support the. Uh, uh, running mat, uh, really good fun. Uh, of course, all of the games here in my collection are complete in box, meaning I have the box and the manual, but uh, this uh, came with the uh, uh, running mat, uh, so uh, that's the box for, for this game. That's, that's the reason why I don't have the uh, smaller cardboard box here, because it doesn't, uh, didn't come with it. Barker Bill's Trick Shooting, one of the uh, games that support the Zapper light gun. Batman, really one of the uh, biggest classics on the system that wasn't made by Nintendo. Uh, it's uh, and also one of the very best uh, games uh, that uh, are based on a movie. So not all licensed games uh, are are up to no good. Uh, actually, most are crap, but yeah, Batman for the NES is, is really fantastic. It's really loosely based on the, mo on the movie and it doesn't even have uh, any of the uh, uh, music from the movie, but it's it has its own own music and it's, uh, it's really a classic in that respect as well. So really, really good stuff. Sunsoft did a really good job with the game. Uh, uh, not sure how <laughs> how uh, how well they uh, served the uh, uh, license, you know, uh, but you know they they did good. They really did a good game, and just happens to be a good Batman game. 
the Battle of Olympus, uh, fresh off the heels of um, uh, Adventure of Link or Zelda 2, very similar kind of uh, game with a side-scrolling uh, uh, adventure RPG sort of. Then we have uh, Bigfoot. Not sure if the crunching and munching is part of the uh, official <laughs> name for the game. Bionic Commando, the first, ca uh, first game from Capcom here in my, my collection. It's a true classic. It's uh, quite different than, uh, than the you know, Bionic Commando on Commodore, Commodore 64, for example. But uh, yeah, really, really good stuff and uh, fantastic music and uh, just uh, uh, I don't think Capcom did uh, very few uh, did, did uh, very many bad games on the NES or on the Super Nintendo or, or ever since but uh, yeah just a fantastic uh, fantastic game quite a different take on the uh, uh, well quite uh, well worn uh, uh, genres of uh, platforming or action, just the fact that you have the uh, bionic hand that you can uh, scale the uh, uh, platforms with, just uh, gives a really nice twist. Then we have uh, Blades of Steel, the first game from Konami, and uh, Konami was even more uh, on fire than, than Capcom. Uh, at least when it comes to uh, uh, the sheer number of games, Konami did a bunch of games for the NES. Uh, Blades of Steel is uh, actually my favorite uh, <laughs> ice hockey game. Just a nice arcade feel and uh, of course the fact that when you get into a fight, the loser goes into the penalty box. It's fantastic. Another one from Sunsoft, Blaster Master. I have really fond memories of this uh, playing as a kid and uh, just a really really uh, nice uh, uh, action adventure game where you uh, alternate between uh, platforming uh, sections that you have your super car uh, really a bouncy car and uh, shoot uh, the enemies with the cannon in the car but then you can also dismount and uh, go into a top-down view of uh, the various uh, caves and uh, other sections of the game. So uh, you alternate between those two viewpoints and it's a fantastic game. Bubble Bubble, uh, one of the biggest arcade classics uh, you'd, uh, you could say and uh, it's a decent port on the NES as well. Then we get to the good stuff from Konami, Castlevania, and of course I also have Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, and Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. And this uh, Castlevania is actually a, a curious one for me because I, I never owned this as a kid. Uh, you know, you have uh, your um, limited resources and uh, you can only get you know, one game for Christmas and stuff like that, so you didn't get all the games as a kid, but uh, one of my friends had uh, Castlevania 2 and I was really intrigued by it. Uh, I couldn't get anywhere in the game, but uh, still it was a really, really cool game. Uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, one of the uh, best uh, games on the system for simultaneous uh, gameplay, you know, co-op. One is Chip and one is Dale, and uh, really gorgeous graphics, uh, as was the norm for Capcom. They really did a good job with the Disney license. And uh, yeah, just if you want to have a game to play with your friend, Chip and Dale is, is your game. Corporate Triangle. Uh, made by Rare, as uh, many uh, many games were on the NES. Uh, but uh, even though, you know, Rare gets... Uh, uh, people think that, you know, uh, Rare stepped into the limelight uh, with uh, 
Donkey Kong Country and the Super Nintendo, but they were really, really uh, active on the NES development front as well. This is sort of like RC Pro-Am on, uh, on water. So really nice, uh, fun uh, uh, racing game basically. Double Dribble, uh, basketball game from Konami. Dr. Mario, one of the classic uh, uh, puzzle games uh, of, of all time. And uh, basically, uh, Nintendo was uh, 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 really, of course, impressed with uh, you know how well Tetris was doing. And uh, Nintendo wanted to uh, develop their puzzle game of their own. And Dr. Mario is, uh, is what came out. Really a fantastic game. And uh, a, a unique take on the uh, age-old formula of uh, uh, blocks falling from the top uh, towards the bottom of the well. So this is nothing like like Tetris, even though it might might look like uh, uh, look like it uh, if you just glance at it. Duck Hunt, of course, one of the biggest biggest classics on the system. Uh, of course, uh, everybody had the uh, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt double cassette uh, or cartridge. That's uh, that's what I have as well uh, coming up. But I uh, also had to get the standalone game just for collecting purposes. Uh, it's a really cool uh, cover here for the game as well with the pixelated graphics. And next we of course have DuckTales 1 and DuckTales 2. 2 of course being a lot more rare. But uh, yeah, everybody everybody had DuckTales 1 and uh, just a classic, classic platforming game. And uh, who doesn't love the moon music? Just fantastic games from Capcom. Then we have Faxanadu. Uh, again, kind of like uh, uh, in, made in the same vein as uh, Zelda 2 Adventure of, of Link uh, with the side scrolling uh, uh, adventure with uh, some, some uh, light RPG elements. And uh, yeah, this is uh, also one of the games that I had as a kid where I was kind of over, uh, over my head in, but I was just uh, enchanted by it. Just uh, uh, I was uh, really, uh, really, uh, uh, you know, wanted to go uh, go and talk to all the people, and uh, it was just uh, really, uh, you know, sparked my imagination, the world tree and uh, and everything. This is a really, really a fantastic game, and uh, this is the only um, NES game that I have VGA graded. And uh, yeah, it's gonna stay that way. But of course, I have uh, one opened game for uh, uh, playing purposes. Final Fantasy. Just have one Final Fantasy. Uh, of course, this is the one that came to the West. Didn't come out in Europe, but uh, came out in in the U.S. And uh, uh, of course, it's a it's a very historic game. Uh, SquareSoft was at the end of their rope, and uh, they decided to do one final game, and uh, they named it Final Fantasy. And if this doesn't uh, uh, succeed, uh, we have to close down shop. But of course, it's uh, of course it's uh, it became a, a, an instant hit and a, a, a true classic for the ages. And uh, yeah, this is uh, really a huge, well, maybe I could open this up, it's a huge, uh, uh, heavy package, uh, gum comes with uh, all sorts of stuff, let's, uh, I, can, I can show you, I got everything here in this uh, little pouch, so it doesn't get damaged when I take the game out, yeah, you got a, a really heavy, uh, uh, manual here, yeah, full color, these were the days, and uh, not one but two uh, maps here, sadly the uh, copy here that I, I bought 
add uh, some of the uh, notes from the previous owner. If you <laughs> uh, realize this is your handwriting, drop me a comment. <laughs> yeah, so map there on the other, other side and a uh, beast cherry here on the other. And uh, here another one. Some maps here on the other side. And uh, some weapons, armor, and magic here on the other side. Huge uh, list here. So, yeah, really, really good, cool package here. Got a lot of uh, bang for your buck. Then we have the Flintstones. Uh, this is actually a pleasant surprise. People, uh, people usually, you know, talk about the Flintstones because the sequel to this game is one of the rarest and more m most valuable games on the NES. But uh, yeah, the first one, it's actually a really good platformer. If you're looking for uh, another platformer that isn't Nintendo, get the Flintstones: The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. And no, I don't have the sequel. <laughs> uh, Gauntlet 2, one of the uh, best um, four-player games if you have uh, have the uh, required adapters yeah just really really fun hack and slash RPG kind of adventure high speed uh, another another game made by rare uh, and uh, it, it look uh, it's a, a pinball game it looks great it doesn't play as great as it looks but uh, still, uh, it uh, uh, leaks uh, ahead of, uh, you know, uh, uh, graphics-wise, it's it's leaks ahead of any other pinball machine on the NES. But uh, yeah, it doesn't play play all that well. But uh, still, still a cool piece of uh, rare uh, software. Ice climber. Uh, I think not that many knew what Ice Climber was before they were put in the uh, to uh, Super Smash Brothers melee, but uh, yeah, I think Ice Climber is living a little bit of a renaissance. Yeah, uh, a nice little game. Again, just something something a bit different to the uh, platforming formula. Nintendo, uh, you know, despite what uh, people say, Nintendo really doesn't like doing the same game. Uh, several times so they really did a lot of uh, different iterations of uh, the same genre but uh, you know very few games played the same jungle book one of the uh, disney games that wasn't made by by capcom and as a result it's not as good but uh, yeah uh, it's the, still uh, some uh, decent graphics here Kickoff, football. Kirby's Adventure. Sadly, the uh, cover here is a bit sunburned. Uh, uh, Kirby should be a lot more pink here. But yeah, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, most technologically advanced games on the NES. Huge number of sprites on screen, uh, you know, sprawling levels, and uh, yeah, just a uh, really, really. Uh, uh, impressive game for its time and uh, yeah uh, Kirby's first game so the series started here on the NES and a true classic uh, on the system but talking about classics here we have The Legend of Zelda uh, yeah, what can I say about this one of the very first games that uh, allowed you to uh, save your game and you know, continue on after uh, after you had turned the machine off. You know, without the use of uh, of a password, and also one of the very early games where uh, that was non-linear, uh, that you could go you know up, down, left or right, right from the beginning of the game. That was huge, and uh, the rest is history. Of course, one of the biggest biggest uh, game series of all time, and uh, this is where it all started. A 
Little Nemo Dream Master. Uh, this is uh, also made by, by Capcom. And uh, uh, I always uh, like to tell this story. Uh, I, I didn't own this as a kid, but uh, uh, at one point as a kid I was hospitalized. I had some strange disease, which uh, curiously, uh, it, I, I don't know what I had. And if I ask my mother, uh, you know, mother, what did I have when I was hospitalized? She doesn't remember I was in hospitalized. So <laughs> I, I guess we'll never know. Uh, it, it wasn't anything, uh, anything uh, serious, of course. I, I guess I got better. Maybe it was just a precaution. But uh, yeah, I, I got to the hospital, and uh, because they, they didn't know what uh, what I had, uh, I was quarantined from the other kids at the ward. But uh, the ward had two uh, NES consoles hooked up to a TV and they were on wheels, you know, so they could cart them around the uh, rooms. And because I had uh, potentially something uh, contagious, it wasn't, but potentially, uh, I had my own NES and a TV uh, to my room, so that was a luxury. <laughs> and uh, one of the games that were there was Little Nemo, the Dream Master. And I, I played through the game all up to the final level. I never beat it, but uh, I really had a good time. And this is just, uh, just uh, I, I have really fond memories of uh, Little Nemo, the Dream Master. Just uh, kept me, uh, uh, kept me, uh, you know, happy, uh, you know, uh, at, at at the hospital uh, all alone. And uh, of course, that wasn't a, a fun time for me, but I uh, at least I could. Uh, uh, you know, dive into NES games while I was there. Maniac Mansion, one of the uh, uh, greatest classics of the point-and-click genre, and uh, as such it doesn't really <laughs> uh, play all that well on the NES, where you just have a, a regular controller, so it's a, it's a bit of a chore to play, but still uh, I just wanted to have this on the NES as well, even though it is better played on a PC. But yeah, excellent, excellent game. Then we get to some of the biggest hitters on the console. Just gonna go through all of these. Mega Man, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 5 and Mega Man 6. Uh, Mega Man 6 uh, was the only game here that wasn't released in Europe, so this was uh, US only uh, here in the West. Uh, Mega Man 5 was uh, it's it was uh, such a late late game in the uh, Nintendo uh, Super uh, NES uh, lineup that I think I was already on the Super Nintendo by the time that this came out, so I never got this as a kid. But uh, uh, also Mega Man 1 was uh, so early, I never got this as a kid, but I, I played this uh, with a, a friend's house. And uh, of course uh, 2, 3 and 4 were the ones that I owned as a kid. And uh, uh, the best memories I have were 2 and 3. Arguably the best games in the, in the series on the NES. And I also have the best music uh, on the NES, not just on the Mega Man series, but uh, full stop. Uh, every single track on Mega Man 1, uh, sorry, 2 and 3 are just pure dynamite. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you're serious about your NES collection, you need to have all six of the Mega Man games. And uh, just uh, fantastic, fantastic platforming games action games and uh, of course with the uh, uh, innovative feature that uh, you get the weapon of the boss that you've beaten uh, and uh, um, you know making the uh, uh, making your adventure quite different from there on out with the new weapon and uh, you gotta figure out what's the correct order on how to uh, beat the bosses, uh, you know, you can, you get, uh, uh, some bosses are weak to one, one weapon and uh, 
that way you have to uh, figure out what uh, boss to beat first and then which uh, boss gets easier after that. All the Mega Man games were password uh, enhanced so uh, lots of uh, lots of paper uh, pieces of paper were uh, around your play area when you were playing Mega Man games. Good times. Then we have Metal Gear. Of course uh, the series started on the MSX but uh, the NES also got a, a decent port of, uh, of the uh, uh, now uh, absolutely classic game series. Back then it was uh, I, I guess uh, just another action game but uh, yeah it, it still had uh, uh, some really trademark stuff for uh, Kojima you know you had the uh, basically like cutscenes and uh, had all the uh, 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 codec discussions and uh, yeah of course Metal Gear itself as the end boss really influ influential game then we have Metroid and speaking of influential you know this uh, this really spawned an entire genre all by itself. Uh, a platforming game that uh, was non-linear and uh, that uh, opened up new uh, areas in the game uh, depending on what kind of abilities you managed to find there and uh, uh, all those uh, secret uh, you know walls and uh, uh, floors that you can bomb and go into newer areas and uh, yeah this was an absolutely uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, most influential games on the NES and uh, I, I would say Super, uh, Super Metroid perfected the formula Metroid 2 on the Game Boy was uh, it was a, a bit tough you know playing in black and white and uh, you know both uh, Metroid 1 and 2 didn't have any map screen so that's uh, that's uh, th that's uh, quite a, a handicap. You know, you basically had to uh, uh, keep uh, doing your own map as you were playing the games. Uh, Super Metroid on uh, the Super Nintendo, of course, remedied that. Uh, but uh, yeah, still a huge, huge achievement by Nintendo, uh, the original Metroid. Mission Impossible, again just uh, uh, one of those games that was uh, really special to me as a kid. Uh, one of the games I had. Uh, this is made by Konami as well. Uh, it says Polcom software here, but uh, uh, back then Nintendo had this uh, rule that uh, you know, in order to uh, avoid shovelware and a poor uh, quality of games, uh, I think it was like five games per company. That you could release per year or something like that but uh, what Konami did was just <laughs> make up more companies so they released games under Konami and Palcom and one third company that I, I can't remember but yeah Konami was really shifty but hey uh, when you're doing uh, classic games after classic games uh, uh, I think Nintendo had nothing to uh, nothing uh, to worry about there yeah, really a nice varied gameplay. You have these uh, top-down sections uh, with, uh, you know, you're on foot and you have all of these different kind of uh, uh, um, like character-specific uh, weapons and items. But you also had some really cool um, chase sequences. You're on a boat or you're skiing down a slope. And uh, yeah, some really nice and varied gameplay here. NES Open Tournament Golf. Uh, this is, uh, you know, Nintendo also made, you know, just a game called Golf. Uh, that was uh, earlier on, but as you can see here, you have the uh, uh, Super Mario World uh, inspired uh, graphics here. And uh, yeah, this is uh, technically a lot more advanced than the just the regular Golf. Probotector, also known as Contra in the US. Uh, one of my favorite games on the NES, full stop. Uh, 
just a just an excellent excellent uh, action game really tough but fair uh, and uh, had some really again some really nice uh, variants in the gameplay you had these uh, uh, screens where you go through uh, you know uh, towards uh, the uh, back wall there but uh, mainly it's uh, it's uh, just a side scrolling game but also you have vertical screens that you jump up upwards and uh, just, uh, just really really a solid uh, action game really great uh, controls really tight and a nice selection of uh, weapons as well pro wrestling uh, some nice meme material here a winner is you and uh, all that and uh, also you have the uh, uh, have the beast man that uh, bites your head I never forget the uh, <laughs> sound effect that comes from uh, from the head biting but yeah uh, it's a fun fun wrestling game Robo Warrior uh, this is uh, made by the same uh, same company that uh, made um, some of the same people that made uh, uh, Bomberman, and, and this is uh, the gameplay here is kind of inspired by Bomberman, but uh, this is a full uh, full on adventure game. So uh, a lot uh, a lot more. Uh, you're not you're not just uh, on one arena and try to uh, win everybody uh, on the screen, but this is uh, uh, really a sprawling adventure game. Roller games, another one from from Konami. Shadowgate, one of my really one of my uh, uh, fave games on the NES, one of the most atmospheric games that I've ever played. Uh, all of the screens uh, in the uh, uh, in this basically a point and click adventure game. Uh, all the screens are just uh, ingrained on my brain. And uh, just uh, love the, love the music here. It's really a nice challenge. It doesn't take long for you to finish the game if you know what you're to, what you're doing. But uh, uh, if you don't know what you're doing and just uh, adventuring on, it's going to take you hours and hours to uh, uh, advance. Basically, a very cere cerebral game. You don't need any um, uh, reflexes or anything. It's just uh, you and your item menu. Uh, uh, and uh, you know your wits uh, to use to uh, advance. Fantastic game. Uh, some of the games that are missing from uh, from the other other games from the same developers are Deja Vu, for example. I really need to get that. Uh, I never played that as a kid, and uh, for some reason I'm still missing that on my uh, on my uh, NES collection. And we have one of the Simpsons games, The Simpsons Bart vs. the Space Mutants. I think everybody had Bart vs. the Space Mutants. You know, Simpsons was just the coolest thing uh, on the TV, and uh, the fact that you can play as Bart was just mind blowing. And a decent game as well. Silent Service, a really uh, uh, hardcore uh, submarine simulator, basically. And uh, you know, look at all these dials here. Just a, just a really, really complicated game. Silver Surfer. I'm sure many of you know this game uh, from AVGN. Uh, one of the uh, toughest games on the uh, uh, NES. Uh, and a really, really uh, excellent graphics, fantastic music, and just a really uh, a top notch. Uh, uh, showing here from Silver Surfer. Then we have Snake's Revenge. And uh, not sure if people know this, but Kojima had nothing to do with this, uh, this game. It's not the same as uh, Metal Gear 2 on the MSX, even though the Metal Gear 1 was supported from the MSX. But uh, yeah, this is just a totally different game, uh, made by totally different people. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's it's still a, a good game, and it's really based on the gameplay of, of Metal Gear, but uh, this is not, uh, 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 you know, official <laughs> canon uh, 
when it comes to Metal Gear. Snake Rattle and Roll. Uh, again, one of those games that uh, was made by Rare and uh, a really cool isometric uh, platformer game. And uh, yeah, really groovy music. Uh, just love Snake Rattle and Roll. Uh, Solar Jetman, another game by Rare. Uh, the, uh, to, uh, the full title says Solar Jetman Hunt for the Golden Warship. And uh, yeah, has some really, really fun uh, space uh, uh, ship physics and uh, quite tough uh, to uh, navigate all of, the, uh, all of the mazes here without damaging your ship. Solstice, uh, another one uh, of those isometric games, uh, really a, a moody game, a nice and atmospheric. I think you can really uh, some of the uh, you know you can really put some some character in the graphics when it's isometric. Uh, it really really stays on your mind. Uh, I think a lot more than you know just a regular 2D game. Star Tropics. I'm missing the sequel, uh, Star Tropics 2, but uh, yeah, this is uh, actually a, a really uh, curious game uh, in the fact that you know the Nintendo made two games on the NES, and we haven't uh, heard from the game series ever since. Uh, um, yeah, this is really, really a, uh, a unique game, you know, set in this tropical island, and uh, has a really unique atmosphere. It's just a uh, really a puzzling thing that Nintendo never made uh, a sequel to this after the NES. You know, they really should bring this back. Actually, I'm here uh, a bit. Uh, I, I was meant to put this under P, so let's let's uh, get this out of the way here. So P for pinball. This is my only uh, Famicom game, so Japanese NES game. And uh, yeah, they were uh, different sized uh, and different shaped cartridges. Uh, of course, the console itself, uh, the Famicom, was, was a different uh, shape. But uh, yeah, this is what they look like on the uh, in, in Japan. And uh, yeah, this is definitely better as a game than the, uh, uh, the rare pinball was. But uh, even though this is in uh, a lot less, less flashy, but just plays like a dream. So continuing here with S, uh, then we have Super C, uh, the sequel to uh, uh, Contra, uh, also known as Probotector 2, in uh, in Europe. Just just more of the same, just a really really top-notch action game. Konami really knew what they were doing. And uh, yeah, just uh, just uh, an all-out action extravaganza. Then we get to one of the uh, most uh, cherished uh, game uh, game cartridges uh, ever: the double feature Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. I think many many of us were raised with this game. This was the first game that many of us played. Uh, and uh, you know, just mind-blowing uh, uh, how much uh, qu uh, quality is in this one game. Super Mario Brothers, of course, being one of the all-time classics ever, still is, and Duck Hunt, you know, showing that uh, you know not all all games uh, need to be played with uh, a controller. You could use the uh, bright red zapper that came uh, came with the console, and uh, just. Just good times, all in all. Love this game, cartridges. But like with Duck Hunt, I also had to get the standalone uh, version of Super Mario Brothers, just for the uh, uh, cover art here. True classic. Then we have Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, you know, as as you know, the uh, original uh, sequel uh, in Japan. Uh, was deemed uh, maybe too uh, too hard, maybe too much of the same. 
so they uh, didn't release uh, that game here in the West. But uh, instead we got this rebranded uh, game uh, that was originally called Doki Doki Panic in Japan, just made with uh, Mario characters. But uh, back then we didn't know anything about that, we just knew that Super Mario Brothers 2 is here, and uh, hey, it's a bit different, or oh, wait, it's a lot different <laughs> than the uh, uh, first game, but uh, uh, to us it was, uh, it was uh, still a classic, and it, it really is, really is a classic. Just a, a totally different kind of game, and uh, I really, uh, I, I think I prefer Nintendo doing it like this. You know, uh, it, it's true. The Lost Levels was very uh, much like the first Super Mario Brothers, so I, I, I think this uh, kept the series uh, more fresh uh, here in the West. But yeah, they never did anything quite like Super Mario Brothers 2 ever again. But again, they should really try. You know, do something uh, that zany with the Mario formula. But then we have Super Mario Brothers 3, uh, possibly the best game on the system, and it was just miles ahead of any competition. And uh, in uh, in my humble opinion, and uh, I know I'm not alone in this, I think this is the better game that Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Of course, uh, Super Mario World was, you know, with the graphics and music and uh, the Super Nintendo, it was just Mario madness and, uh, you know, nobody, uh, you know, everybody loved Super Mario World. But, uh, you know, now, uh, you know, decades later, and I can look at the games uh, on their own, I would say that Super Mario Bros. 3 is it's just better in terms of platforming. And, uh, you know, especially when you factor in the fact that, you know, this came out before and on inferior hardware, then, you know, Super Mario Bros. Brothers 3 is a huge feat for, uh, from Nintendo. And just, uh, just a fantastic all-time, all-time classic uh, platforming game. And we have uh, Super Off-Road, a fantastic four-player game. Uh, kind of like with uh, uh, Gauntlet 2, there aren't that many of those four-player games, but uh, I think this is my favorite four-player game. Just, uh, just really, really uh, uh, tons of fun to uh, hit the dirt with your three, three friends. Uh, but speaking of four-player games, here we have uh, another back-to-back: -back, Swords and Serpents, and uh, this is. Uh, 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 a lot heavier RPG game than Gauntlet, you know, Gauntlet was just mindless hack and slash uh, in a uh, like an RPG RPG setting, but uh, the, uh, this this actually has uh, has a lot more depth to it as uh, you know, this has the uh, experience points and all and uh, yeah, uh, a, a nice game and uh, uh, I never played that uh, that game with uh, three friends, but I, I I think it would be really fun to try it out if I can get the uh, get the crew together. <laughs> then we have Tailspin, uh, another Disney game from Capcom, and uh, this time it's not a platforming game, but uh, you're actually flying, and as such, it's uh, it's one of the uh, more unique games on the system. Basically, you know, it's a uh, you know, you could say it's it's like Gradius or R-Type, you know, uh, shoot them up like that, just with really cool, cute Disney graphics. But uh, yeah, this is uh, a really a, a different kind of, of of game. I don't think Capcom has quite made a game like this before or since. And we have Tecmo Cup, football game. Uh, actually a really unique game and this has some uh, really deep RPG elements uh, injected into a uh, game of football. Uh, then we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Of course this is one of the games that everybody had. Uh, this was, uh, you know, the Turtles Mania was reaching a fever pitch and uh, this came just at the right time. I wouldn't say that this is, uh, you know, this has all all kinds of weird enemies and uh, and stuff that wasn't in the uh, comics or the, uh, uh, you know, the cartoon. 
but uh, still it that didn't matter you know you could play as all four of the uh, turtles and uh, yeah, it was just uh, just a, a huge huge game back in the day everybody had this uh, what I'm missing from my collection is uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and 3 they're the uh, more standard um, beat em up or beat em, beat em all game type and uh, for some reason I, I don't have those so that's a, a glaring uh, hole in my my collection that one uh, that much I know and uh, they're definitely on my on my shopping list, uh, shopping list and maybe inspired uh, after doing this video I'm just gonna hit eBay and uh, get those games ASAP <laughs> um, Tom and Jerry the ultimate game of uh, uh, cat and mouse. And we have to the Earth. You know this looks like it's a uh, it's a spaceship game, but it's actually a, a a zapper game, light gun game. Track and Field Two from Konami, one of those original uh, uh, game controller killers. You know you had to. Uh, push A or uh, you know push uh, forwards and backwards as uh, fast as you can and uh, yeah these were really really nice uh, nice uh, party games multiplayer games good stuff Trojan from Capcom uh, it's uh, you know I, I guess uh, you know Capcom was uh, was uh, fed up and doing all of those uh, really bright and cute Disney graphics and uh, I guess you know you could also say that Mega Man was uh, uh, had some bright and cute graphics as well but this is some more realistic uh, graphics uh, for from from Capcom Wizards and Warriors and this is uh, another classic rare uh, game series they made three of these on the NES I have here one and two. Two here, of course, uh, famously has Fabio on the cover. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, yeah, these were these were fantastic games. I gotta tell you, uh, uh, non-linear, and uh, you have to uh, you have uh, you know you have your uh, spells and uh, uh, armor, and uh, but uh, also has some devilish uh, platforming sections as well. So yeah, these are really really nice and. Uh, they're varied games. I love uh, Wizards and Warriors games. Then we have Wrath of the Black Manta. Xevious, a uh, classic shoot 'em up game. Then we have Yoshi, another uh, Nintendo uh, puzzle game. Uh, that wasn't Tetris, and uh, yeah, this is uh, you know I I I do prefer Doctor Mario. I don't think Yoshi is that good of a puzzle game, but still, it's uh, I'd say it's an essential NES game. You know, uh, one one thing that people don't realize is that you know. Uh, Yoshi was introduced on Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo, so this is uh, deep into uh, Super Nintendo territory. Uh, a very late game on the NES library. And one more, and we are done with my NES collection. Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link. And uh, kind of like uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, this was a huge departure from the first game. You know, the first Zelda was just top-down, like uh, pretty much every 2D Zelda ever since. But this was something different. It was uh, mainly uh, a side-scrolling game, uh, even just uh, just uh, brief sections on the overworld map. But uh, mainly you were uh, uh, you know side-scrolling here, and you have your experience points and magic and spells and everything. Uh, uh, just just really uh, nice light RPG elements injected into into Zelda. I think I would uh, again I would really nice uh, w would like to see uh, something quite off the beaten path like this for for Zelda. 
especially you know those experience points and everything you know do a full on rpg game with uh, with zelda if you're if you're listen, listening nintendo but yeah this uh, really nice to see nintendo taking chances uh, with their game series uh, the first uh, sequel they have the chance to do and uh, well, but of course Zelda isn't a uh, stranger to taking chances after they went 3D with Ocarina of Time then they revamped all the graphics with Wind Waker and uh, that co caused much of an uproar they've uh, experienced uh, uh, you know, experimented with uh, multiplayer games with Zelda and uh, you know now Breath of, Breath of the Wild going open world so Zelda has always been a Nintendo franchise that they have taken chances with and uh, innovated with and uh, Zelda 2 is the uh, first and prime example of that um, that's all of my 77 NES games uh, this was quite a long video and as is customary if, if you've made it all the way to the end here I really uh, thank you Follow FinGamer on Twitter and Instagram. Stay tuned for more uh, collection updates uh, uh, for the consoles that I uh, mentioned in the beginning of the video. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.